What's going on everybody? It's Kyle Vinick. Ever since the iPhone 6, Apple has been introducing two different smartphones each year to compete with other flagships. But in early 2016, they decided to release a smartphone with flagship specs but in a smaller body. So this is the iPhone SE. The body looks exactly like an iPhone 5S but there are some differences. The Apple logo on the back is now a separate component. We also get an SE badge underneath the iPhone logo like how you find on the S models. And the chamfered edges now have a matte finish. I personally like it that way because it doesn't shine so much and it's not prone to scratches. And what comes back from the 5S are the two glass panels. This is more of a clean look, better than the antenna lines on the 6S and even on the 7. If you guys are wondering, I've been using the UAG case for this iPhone and I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check it out. So the display on here is a 4 inch LCD IPS display. It's the same as you find on the 5S. The viewing angles are not that good. I mean it's pretty good, but compared to a 6S, it can look a little funky. So on the SE, it doesn't have 3D touch, but the software works well without it. So on iPhones without 3D touch, notifications have a view option. And pressing and holding on songs in the music app opens up the options for the songs. Below the screen, you'll find the Touch ID sensor. It's the first generation, same as the one on the iPhone 5S, so it's not as fast as the 6S. But some people actually prefer the slower speed. The good thing is that it now works with Apple Pay via NFC. So the SE is running that A9 64-bit CPU, which is also found in the 6S. That means performance on this phone is amazing. We also got that two gigabytes of RAM making multitasking very smooth. Since this phone has a lower resolution display, the processor has less pixels to push. So I find this phone keeping up with the iPhone 7 Plus in a lot of different tasks. The GPU is set to be three times faster than the 5S. So it's awesome to have a powerful experience, especially on this small phone. By the way, the SE is upgradable to the latest iOS version, which right now is 10.1.1. Battery life has been really good to me. It's a 1624 milliampere battery. On average, I begin like five hours of usage, not including the usage of my music. Since it doesn't feature the A10 processor, you're not gonna get the same battery efficiency as you'll find on the iPhone 7s. So with the SE, battery would drain more when using a more intensive app. So charging the SE, it takes about two hours. It's a pretty slow charge, but it charges faster than the 7 Plus with a smaller battery. Unfortunately, the front camera isn't upgraded from the 5S, so it's still a 1.2 megapixel. Outdoor shots with the front camera isn't too bad, but you start to notice it's poor quality indoors. Now on the back, we got that same 12 megapixel camera as you'll find on the 6S. So it's able to record in 4K. It doesn't have OIS, but the software does a pretty good job on handling the shakiness and the focus is really smooth without looking too unnatural. But the pictures on here are sharp with good detail. It has pretty good exposure and the saturation is well balanced compared to its competition. Low light images have pretty good detail without too much noise, but you will notice some color loss when you're taking pictures in low light situations. Now, even though it's the same camera system as the 6S, it sits flush with the body of the phone. Since this phone is so small, it makes taking pictures super easy. And that's not the only good thing about its size. Just simply putting it down and picking it up, holding it, putting it in your pocket, putting it on the table, it makes managing the phone really easy. And that's the main thing I come across when I'm using this phone. But smartphones has changed a lot over the years. A lot of people prefer the bigger display for gaming and watching videos. And it's pretty hard to do that on a four inch display. The phone is still good. It's just that I wouldn't recommend it to most people. But I would recommend it to people who don't really put too much work in a smartphone, but still wants that reliability. Or for people who simply prefer a four inch display phone, so they can basically one hand everything. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys would rock an iPhone SE as your daily driver. As always, comment down below. Let me know what you think about the video. And make sure you subscribe for the latest. Later.